sometimes folks will come in with significant cartilage defects or severe osteoarthritis. Uh, often people uh, don't want to get total knee replacement, hip replacement, or a fusion operation of the ankle, and they'll ask, you know, can I get stem cell prolotherapy or bone marrow prolotherapy? Here you're watching me, uh, Dr. Rosshauser at Caring Medical, do an iliac crest uh, bone marrow aspiration. So here I take the easy IO drill. You'll see me with the drill here, and you'll what I'm going to do now is tap onto the bone, you know, the iliac crest. So I'm tapping on the iliac crest, making sure I'm on the bone there. And you'll see with the drill, I'll drill basically into the middle of the pelvis, pelvic bone, the iliac bone. And, you know, when I get down a few inches, then, uh, you know, I'll take the drill off, obviously. And then I'm going to get rid of the trocar here. And then now we're just going to start aspirating bone marrow and what we can do is really draw off uh, you know as much as we need and then what we're going to do then is concentrate it down so we'll take a lot a lot of bone marrow then we're going to concentrate it down to the fraction that has the progenitor cells or stem cells and these are cells that can change into other cells so the reason that you might use bone marrow uh, aspiration for prolotherapy is because the person has a medical condition causing their pain where there's a deficiency of cells. So some people don't have any cartilage left or they don't have any meniscus left or they have severe tendinosis, you know, which means that there isn't a lot of tendon cells to proliferate because the tendon is all degenerated. So sometimes a arthritic joint can get so arthritic that there's a deficiency of cells, so there isn't anything to proliferate, you know, in regard to normal prolotherapy. So in those situations, we're going to actually use bone marrow aspirate concentrate or bone marrow aspirate. In other words, we're going to use the bone marrow cells themselves to provide the growth factors and the cells that we're trying to proliferate inside the joint. So when you take progenitor cells or stem cells and you put it into a joint, those cells have the potential to form meniscal cells, labral cells, cartilage cells, joint lining cells, or called synovial cells. The synovial cells make the joint fluid. If the synovial cells make the joint fluid, then obviously there's cushion in the joint. If the cartilage cells make cartilage, then there's obviously cartilage, which is another cushion. The meniscus is also a cushion as it relates to the knee, provides knee stability and labral tears. You know, obviously you need the labrum and the shoulder and the hip to stabilize the shoulder and the hip. So you see me here, I'm still drawing off uh, bone marrow. So we're going to get a lot, a lot of uh, progenitor cells or stem cells uh, from this client to inject into one of his joints and the reason we would do that is because most likely the person had uh, such a significant osteoarthritis that the doctors are now recommending that they get a joint replacement and I don't know about you but I don't want my joint replaced unless it's absolutely absolutely necessary so we have about a 90% success rate here at Caring Medical of keeping people away from knee replacements and joint replacements. I mean, obviously, we have a certain criterion before we're going to use this therapy or prolotherapy in uh, any individual uh, patient. But the results thus far in regard to bone marrow aspirate concentrate using it as a proliferant has been excellent, just excellent. And here we're taking out the, uh, the drill bit there and then we'll put pressure on there and put a dressing over that and here you'll see me uh, uh, inject it into the joint here we're just going to inject the uh, bone marrow uh, into the joint 